Yeah, Mark, protesters have made their way back here to Monument Circle for the past hour. We've been walking alongside those protesters as they've taken to the streets, walking all throughout downtown Indianapolis. Now they've gathered back here. They're back on the microphone, chanting and speaking. I should mention that things were pretty peaceful throughout the past hour as we were walking alongside them. We did see police, but they were actually, um, sorry about that, uh, police. Sorry about that, guys. Um, police were distant. They were about a block away. And I should mention, we also did see the National Guard. They were kind of locked up at um, the War Memorial. So they were standing by there. Again, no interaction with any protesters. Same with police. We saw no interaction, um, no words exchanged. The protesters just known. walking alongside. Today. Let that be known. And now they are back here along Monument Circle. Again, this is just one protest that we saw here today. Earlier, around noon, there was a different kind of protest, one that was more quiet, one that was actually silent. Protesters were kneeling to honor George Floyd and IMPD police chief Randall Taylor actually kneeled with them himself. Dozens of protesters kneeling in silence in front of the city county building. Also, Indianapolis police headquarters. Fists raised in the air, heads bowed in solitude, all in protest against police brutality following the death of George Floyd. This goes far beyond Mr. Floyd. It's a, it's a deep to the problem. So I'm, I'm really, really, really. Really, I'm asking for your help. Community members today speaking directly with IMPD Chief Randall Taylor and other officers who came down to the protest. You've given this power, this power has a lot of responsibility to it. We look to you to make sure that you don't abuse that power, that you use it responsibly. We want to trust you. We would love nothing more than to trust you. This is what we'd hope for, right? Uh, people have a lot of opinions, a lot of good opinions, uh, and we want to hear that. It's so much easier to hear it when it's done with the class that these people have done it with. The chief saying it's been difficult to manage those who have turned violent, especially Saturday night, lighting dumpsters on fire, vandalizing innocent businesses. I appreciate so much you coming down, sharing your, your time and your emotion, but I especially appreciate how peaceful you've done this. Trust me, it speaks volumes. Protesters here today also denouncing that kind of violence. We cannot have outside elements come inside here to destroy everything that we're trying to build and make the story about them because that's what they want. And I refuse to let them win. It's tainting the message. It is, absolutely. Only encouraging people. Have those tough conversations. I'm counting on you. Not only am I counting on you, but I believe in the goodness and decency that is you. This fight is a fight that's worth having. No, I mean, you're okay. And sorry guys, we gotta take a couple steps back here. But again, they're just chanting here behind us. They've stopped at Monument Circle for the time being. We'll see how far they go. But I wanted to um, shift over here and show you. We have some I-Town Church volunteers. You guys have just been handing them food, some snacks. Why are you out here today? We're just out here showing some love in the middle of the chaos. Like, I don't feel like we're fighting a battle against one another. We're fighting against the real enemy, which is Satan. And everybody needs to realize that. If they, just all follow Jesus Christ and pray to the Lord and do right things. We can, we can heal our country. Thank you, thank you. And you can see they have some snacks bag that you guys have been handing out to protesters here. So we don't know how long this will last for. We will, of course, keep you um, updated here on RTV6. But as of now, they have been pretty peaceful. No violence to report here. Um, but for now, I'll send things back to you guys. Stephanie, thank you for that report. And today, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb spoke about the peaceful protesting that then turned into violent riots this weekend and where we as a state go from here. RTV6's Cameron Riddle is live with the governor's message tonight. Cameron. Well, good evening. The governor made it clear there is nothing that is okay about the death of George Floyd and admits it is indeed infuriar infuriating. But he says there is nothing about looking around downtown that makes him feel any better when he sees the damage that happened here as well as in over a dozen of other Indiana cities. Tonight, the National Guard will be assisting the Indiana State Police in protecting state property like the Indiana State House, which was on the receiving end of damage from protesters 
as early as Friday night. The governor spent part of his afternoon talking on the phone with the president and attorney general who are urging governors to get a handle on the destruction that has caused chaos in dozens of major cities since Friday. Tonight, the governor is ready to deploy state resources and help local police at a moment's notice. Coordinated efforts to unlawfully breaking in and entering, shooting at law enforcement officials, and setting fires has taken on a tone of organized crime and will be responded to accordingly. Therefore, Indiana will continue assisting local communities with the needed state resources to enforce the rule of law and protect lives and property. And as it is after six o'clock, we are now less than two hours away from the curfew that begins all across Marion County, meaning everyone who is downtown, except if you're working or being law enforcement or news media, you are supposed to be inside. Tonight, we have seen protesters continue to go to Monument Circle, where you just heard from Stephanie Waite. Some of those protesters do have some gear with them, including milk, uh, meaning that they are prepared for what could come, including those pepper balls and tear gas that have been deployed throughout this downtown town for the past four days. We'll see what happens as we approach that eight o'clock point and as it starts to rain. Reporting live tonight, I'm Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Cameron, thank you. And you can watch the entirety of Governor Holcomb's news conference right now up on our website at theindychannel.com and the RTV6 app. Extending the city's curfew tonight isn't the only step Mayor Joe Hogsett says he's taking after this weekend's violence. He says that he's working with the chief of police to reform the city's use of force policy. Chief Randall Taylor says there were at least two incidents over the weekend of police use of force that required investigating. Mayor Hogsett says the new use of force review board will look into incidents where officers use force on civilians. Like so many. I have serious concerns about some of the interactions between our officers and protesters from this weekend. We have an obligation to examine and render judgment on the conduct of our police officers. Mayor Hogsett says the new use of force review board will involve significant civilian participation. And he asked Chief Taylor for a reformed use of force policy within the next two weeks. The weekend shootings during the riots led to two deaths. One of the victims was well known in Indianapolis and among the IU football community as well. The Marion County Coroner's Office says Chris Beatty was the victim of a shooting that happened around 2.30 Sunday morning near Pennsylvania and Market Streets. He later died at Eskenazi Health Hospital. Beatty played football at IU and also with a Cathedral High School team that won three state championships. He later started an events and consulting business and was a partner at Revel Nightclub. Beatty was frequently seen at sports events across the city and word of his death prompted an outpouring of grief on social media. Chris Beatty was only 38 years old. And shop owners in downtown Indianapolis are still cleaning up today after violent protests this weekend. Our Troy Washington is working for you to show us the plan to rebound from this setback. This graffiti can be replaced. These windows can be replaced, but the shop owner wants to make sure that the message isn't missed, even though his shop was caught in the mayhem. I mean, I was angry at first, but I definitely understand the reason why um, this is happening. Romeo Gerson owns Michael's Soul Kitchen on Ohio Street, right downtown. It's known for its live music and tasty comfort food. But as you can see, he's not open today as he expected to be come June 1st. That's because damage delayed the opening of these doors. I was at home when I started receiving calls, and then by the time I got here, all our window was busted, and um, it was the damage was already happened. He's not the only business owner who felt the wrath of protesters, saying they are desperate to see change. When I checked my cameras, I saw more than 15 to 20 people. They were just breaking inside the store and they're just tearing my life savings apart, you know. I try to call 911, but they cannot do anything. Security of the mall cannot do anything about it. So I was just helplessly watching all that stuff, you know. Fahad Malik owns a jewelry store inside of Circle Center Mall. He claims his kiosk and his store was hit hard over the weekend by protesters. It's a tough time for shop owners who were barely surviving the pandemic. 
only to be hit with this. But many shop owners are trying to stay positive. People just coming in and wanting to help. Like right now we have a group of people that just showed up and they are contractors and they are offering to fix uh, stuff for us for free. The group that showed up to help here is called City Life, a local nonprofit. They're hoping to repair this damage and help get this business back on track so that they can open. Working for you downtown, I'm Troy Washington, RTV6. And no word just yet on how soon doors will be open again at the Soul Kitchen. They are continuing takeout for the time being. Find out how you can help them rebound from this when you read this story on the IndyChannel.com. So when you attack those, you attack us. And so it's very personal. Indiana's war memorials covered in graffiti after weekend protests. Today, cleanup began. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum shares why some veterans and those who helped manage the war memorials say this was not the right place for people to spray paint their message. Leaders with the Indiana War Memorial say they have never seen damage to this extent. And they say the cleanup and restoration efforts could take over a week. They are some of the most iconic landmarks in the state. And this weekend, they became the canvas for those with a message. Damage has done uh, quite a bit to tell a story that they're trying to tell. We're obviously trying to tell a story too. A story of our country's history and the freedom so many fought for. But today, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument tells the story of hurt, frustration, and a sometimes divided community. So when it comes to the defacing of government property and stuff, if that's what you want to do to make this world a better place, then do that. The slap in the face to people that have put the cloth of our nation on their backs to you know, to serve. Stuart Goodwin is the executive director of the Indiana War Memorial. He stood by as restoration crews worked to remove spray paint from the monument. He says 80% of monuments in Indianapolis are damaged and cleanup is no easy task. A special solution has to be used to draw the paint out of the limestone before it can be washed away. People are turning to government affiliated buildings or like the, memor the memorial and monuments, uh, things like that because their voice isn't being heard loud enough. This protester says she doesn't condone damage to government property, but she understands why some may have done it. We can continue and continue to say this isn't fair and do the peaceful protest, but as much as it breaks my heart to say, peaceful protests aren't always the way that's gonna get your voice heard. Others say this is not the right way to fight for change. When you attack those, you attack us. We want people to come here, we want people to enjoy this, but we also ask them to leave it the way they found it. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. Marion County Prosecutor Ryan Mears says he will not file charges against 41 nonviolent protesters arrested in downtown Indianapolis this past Saturday and Friday. Mears announced today that each arrest was reviewed on a case by case basis. 14 suspects allegedly involved in looting from downtown businesses are facing burglary charges. Mears is also steering those who have allegations of improper conduct by city police officers to contact the Citizens Police Complaint Office. And right now we have all of today's new developments concerning the protests as well as the specifics about Marion County's curfew tonight. That's up on our website at theindychannel.com and the RTV6 app. I'm Dave First. In an important part of the calendar for the Colts, this is the moment the organization is talking about now. Head coach Frank Reich opens up, coming up in the Sports Extra Spotlight. Dave, showers are on the move from Indy to Shelbyville and down to Franklin. Here and gone, though, very quickly we'll move out. What moves in for the rest of the week? Find out coming up. Victoria Sparks and I approve this message. Welcome back to the news at six. We've changed the calendar. Here we are, the beginning of June. Your temperature trend as we go through the month, obviously temperatures continuing to rise. The warmest average high will occur uh, during the month of July, but we're at 85 for the average high by the end of the month. This month typically not as wet as May, which is the wettest of the year. We had over seven inches last month and 19 days from now, summer will officially start. We're dry tomorrow, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three straight days. Thunderstorms become more likely as temperatures go up and the humidity climbs.